Amri here from Worcester, Western Cape, South Africa. It is Yarn Friday. I decided to call this whole Friday thing Yarn Friday. I will be talking about exclusively about yarns and what it is that I supply or stock rather than supply, what it is I stock and also what I'm busy with, what I have at this moment and busy working on, the yarn I'm busy with working on and specifically explain the type of yarn. I will also, the yarn I'm talking about, I will have links below either for the website of the company, um, the supplier, or I will have for their Facebook page. It all depends on whether they actually have a website or I think they all have Facebook pages, but not all of them have websites. So my day consisted, I'm, I'm kind of tired, so please excuse that. I went to, um, I delivered yarn and I picked up yarn that I bought, which is cotton. I'm not talking about this yarn tonight, just showing you. This is what I bought. And this is what I have in stock. Now, this will be Moya Cotton Double X. So these are new colors I have. Got two other packs as well, different colors. I'm going to try and keep Friday nights short. Uh, I've got, as I said, I'm tired anyway, but if I, no matter what time on a Friday, I'm going to keep it short. Monday nights. Mondays will be my my chat nights or whatever, but but a Friday I feel I just want to talk about the specific yarn I'm busy with and then and, and that's it. So what I'm going to talk about tonight is colors of grace, sock weight. I bought two skeins for myself for my birthday, and I had a big fat struggle getting it into a ball of yarn because I do not have a swift and yes I know I need one I just don't have one yet I haven't got my husband to make one for me and also I have a wool winder but that needs to be connected with the swift to make it easier so I had to do it all by hand and I'm really stupid with it so there's nothing wrong with the yarn there's something wrong with my my skills but eventually I got it into this ball it's not a cake apparently this is a cake I never grew up with yarns being cakes I grew up with them being in balls I live in South Africa so that to me is still a ball but doesn't matter cake ball this is a definite definite ball of yarn so I, I rolled it into this. I'm still busy with the other one. The other one will probably become socks. I want socks. The recommended needle size and hook size on this is a 3 or a 4 millimeter. I am now using a 4.5. I started out with a... Uh, uh, Shawl. Um, uh, please excuse what it looks like. It's, I'm still busy figuring out a pattern for it. Trying to figure one out. Probably going to have some lacy bits and stuff in between. But just to show you what it looks like when it's been knitted. This is what it looks like. I love how the colors flow. I think this would be absolutely perfect for socks. Um, I'm going to look see what it looks like when I have the lace bits in between this is stuck in it anyway this is the wrong side so I, I haven't decided yet I, I'll probably frog this one again and just you know I, I work I'm working this pattern out actually as I go 
so it's not a not something I've written down yet or it's it's just something I'm I'm busy with sort of winging it and writing it down as I'm winging it I can say that these that this yarn is really it's soft it's not scratchy on my skin so far I've tested it on my skin <laughs> it's not scratchy it's not super wash it's a hundred percent merino but as far as I know it's not super wash and it works wonderfully there are no splits so it's got quite a, t a tight twist you'll see but it still has your typical merino stretch so I, I absolutely love working I don't like working with stuff that twists on me uh, sorry that splits on me it twists is fine <laughs> splitting is not I I don't mind working on a yarn that's got like Aaron that, like the one I'm I've made this shawl with which seems to be constantly moving around at the moment this has a, a it's a textured yarn so you know that it will have like a, a different type of piece of string in there that's fine but if you if I buy something like this I don't want it splitting on me I, I really hate that no splits so far and I'm working with a very sharp pointed needle so no splits so far I think if I have to be honest, I, I just want to talk a bit about Colors of Grace. Colors of Grace, uh, the, it, the lady who's the owner of Colors of Grace is called Milani. I will put the website, her website link. She has one already. Um, I know she's supposed to have one, but I'll go check. And her Facebook page down below, and you can have a look at her colors. It's beautiful. Now, firstly, let me just say... The name Colors of Grace, I saw her yarn the first time in Pretoria in another wool shop called Yarn in a Barn. And the name really triggered me. If you go onto any of my profiles or take a look at my, even my Ravelry profile, you will see there very clearly that my, I am a born again spiritual Christian. By the way, if you don't want to hear little things like hallelujah, praise the Lord, and thank you Jesus, this is not the channel for you. Then you need to navigate to a different channel because you're going to hear it a lot. I'm not going to change my tune about that. Sorry. I, that's not, just not going to change. So needless to say, the name Colors of Grace immediately caught my attention and then when I actually went and I looked at the colors at that point it was still just the cottons the, uh, her series are all called by the names of biblical women so the four ply that she, she has a four ply a ten ply and the sock weight merino so far the four ply is called Rachel Magdalene is a ten ply and then this one is called Delilah now, I think that's a very appropriate name, since this little ball of yarn is really tempting. I'm telling you, the colors that she has really is tempting. You do not want to say no to those colors. I love them. <laughs> I'm having a big, fat struggle not to just buy the whole lot of them. I'm going to have in stock, I think, next week. Usually it gets here within a week. As I said, Vitbunk is quite far away. I am still going to try and figure out how I can do a, just have a talk with her, an interview or something. I'll, I'll figure that out. I want to do that with all, all my suppliers. I think it is very important for people to know who the people are that are dying and so on. Uh, the... I think she just, she, in a way, as far as a merino goes, she 
classifies as a as an indie dyer. It's it's I don't even know what indie dyer means, but I have to assume it's people that uh, the yarns are one of a kind. There's not a a specific amount of colors being used in the dyes or, or the specific color ranges. And I I love that. I love the diversity of it. And then, oh, that's the first one. I, I saw her colors. At that point, it was still Rachel. And one of the things about Colors of Grace that always leaves a constant impression on me are her, the colors that I see. There was this one, the first lot I saw, were these colors that were exactly the same colors I use when I paint a landscape. Exactly those colors. Actually, the first time I spoke to her, I asked her, are you an artist? Are you a painter? Because her, her color ranges are so... It's vibrant and it's... It's beautiful, but... Even more than that, it fits. It fits together. It's amazing. I I saw, I looked at these colors and they I just saw an entire landscape within those colors. So that for me is one of the most impressive things about Colors of Grace. And you will see that in a four ply and you will see that in the ten ply in the two cottons. And then the merino just goes wild. The merinos just go completely wild and and I absolutely love the diversity so to as I promised Friday nights will be very quick or Fridays during the day or whatever time it will it will be very quick I am going to start working on this again I'll probably just frog this as I said before but I'm going to work on it and I'm and, and I'll show you what I've got what I've done as soon as I've got something done and then I want to really encourage anybody living in South Africa, if you live in Gauteng area in itself, you live close to Vitbank, you can buy directly from her. She, um, if you live in the Western Cape or anywhere close to the Western Cape or somewhere in the middle, you can buy from me or from her. If you live in the Western Cape area, I, I post, I, I, I sometimes if it's close enough to me, like it was Stellenbosch today, I deliver it, personally. So I, I really want to encourage you to try this yarn. It really is beautiful and it, it works amazing. You can even work it with, um, no, uh, um, as I said, I'm busy with the merino and I love it. I absolutely love it. I, I can ask. She does have a double knit somewhere on the horizon. I'm hoping it will happen at some point. But for now, the sock, yarn, sock weight is fine. It's, it's wonderful yarn. Yeah. So that's all I really have to say tonight. I will put the links for her website, if she had one, as I said before, and her Facebook down below in the description box. You can just check it out there. You can just go check out her different colors. And uh, if you if you are living in the Western Cape or somewhere else that and you are interested, please contact me. Send me an email. I I've got my email details in my profile, so just go check it out and send me an email. Or if you're living close to Whitbank, contact her. Either way, I can honestly vouch for this yarn. I'll talk about the cottons later. I will also talk about Moya cottons. And then I will also talk about Beatrix, um, Beatrix um, Merinos that I will be having here very soon. Okay, have a wonderful evening and uh, and weekend. Just try and take it as, make it as peaceful as possible. If you have little children, try and keep 
enough time to sleep somewhere. <laughs> okay, talk to you again. Bye-bye.